After 15 years of Monster Hunter, it is time to decide which monster is the best. And these are the only two people qualified for the job. <laughs> Welcome back to Ultimate Turf Wars. Hey, last week you guys voted for who won, so who won? I'm not going to use the drum roll. Stop making a real one. I'm not going to use it. Ta-da! Why did you just say ta-da? <laughs> I finished my song. Ta-da! Okay. With, um, 87% to 13%. Could have gone either way. Yeah, of course. That's very even. Sonoka! Wait a minute! Alright, the winner of the second one. Uh, it's, it's not the winner. that on, on past uh, quickly. Between uh, Gigante and, um, and Astalos. Uh, it was closer this time. 75% to 25%. Yeah. Which honestly is any cl closer than it has any right to be. So I'm taking pride in whatever the fuck I said there. <laughs> <laughs> Because of course Astaloth won that. So Yeah, of course. It's closer, so, so on, you you did well, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, yeah. Riding riding on by. Riding on Gigante by Gigante won. Eighty one percent to nineteen percent Brachydios. Of course. Yeah. Sorry, I can't commit to what I was doing. Brachydios to it. <laughs> yeah, I mean I mean that, yeah, that's fair. It's totally fair. Why are you the way that you are? Three, two, one, go. <laughs> <laughs> Stop using the tablet! <laughs> oh, how is mine still somehow worse? Because <laughs> you just like you don't include the back half of the head. You cut it, it off just and looks the like runs out. it looks like he's frozen in the expression he was when he got his head cut off. Like he was just ah, and, and it, honestly, it looks like Tigrex is the one that did it because he's there like. <laughs> <laughs> He more just like, looks irritated, just done like, something. can this be done already? Why am I even here? It's very rare that I get to use this word and have it be so relevant to the situation. Uh -huh. But the only thing I can describe that Tigrex says is dastardly. <laughs> like, he just has Like, what, that, he should like, have, like, a, a cowboy hat and, like, a bandolier on? Or... He, he is rubbing his claws together just under that picture. You can't see, but he is... He is... Ooh. Excellent. Dastardly Tigrex versus decapitated screaming Clavinus. <laughs> Three, two, one. Speak your words. Tigrex is an angry Wrong. monster. Oh, you can't do that. Ah, jokes on you. I didn't actually start the timer. That's fine. It was a foe. It was a foe. It was a. It was a like when you shoot someone in the foot at the start of a race because the gun fell out of the guy's hands. I always wondered what would happen if the starting gun just like just chose one of the competitors. Like, bad luck next time, chap. What do you mean <laughs> the starting gun chose one of the competitors? The gun doesn't Obviously, magically the, the, fire a bullet and then it hits someone in the ankle. Guns don't kill people. Uh-uh. I kill people. With gun power. Go! Tigrex is a monster who does damage with his roars, which will hurt him and ruin his internal organs with vibrations. He's endlessly aggressive. He'll... Jump at him and like find his wheat spots and, and fucking eat them and he'll just fucking go for them No, and Glavinus will probably like tear him off and throw him but Tigrex doesn't care I'll get right the fuck back up and right on and I guarantee you that Tigrex is gonna be faster and more relentless than Glavinus is And he's also more agile and small and Glavinus is gonna have trouble tearing something off of him Without hurting himself because he's got the little stubby T-Rex arms and the, the the tail will definitely not be able to reach around to hit him And his mouth won't be able to reach around to hit him So Tigrex just needs to literally like jump onto a place and just start going to fucking town the way Tigrex does He, he, he throws rocks based on the terrain so like if they're in a cold place you can fucking freeze them and if they're in a hot place you can fucking melt them um yeah that, that's tigrex he's he's a fancy guy uh, how much time is left one second and you're up all right i did it so let's begin by ignoring everything that you said wow. and moving <laughs> look that's debating 101 i'm pretty sure no all right are you ready? Why, what do you mean am I ready? Three, two, one, go. Glavinus. All right. His tail 
is going to cut Tigrex in half. And time. Alright, fine, I'll keep going. Yeah, so. you should. <laughs> I could just feel you! <laughs> no, but like, for realsies, Glavidus is like, at least double the weight of Tigrex. Like, specifically, he is uh, almost double the length thanks to the tail sword. Honestly, the tail sword itself is nearly as big as a Tigrex's body, if you ignore his flaily waily wiggly tube man limbs. And... I'll be honest with you, we have seen a Tigrex jump on top of a Gammoth, but at the same time it did absolutely fuck all to something like a Gammoth, which is just fur and skin and blubber, whereas a Glavinus has almost Brachydeus level of a shell. It's just minerary, rocky, like, well, 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 what's the- Oh, what's it called? What's the- Oh, I ran out of time! I'm trying to remember what fucking Obsidian! There we go! Doesn't Here's count, it wasn't within your timer. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just going to say it during no, the rest sorry, of the no. back and forth. You have forth. to do that like, later. You can't do that right now. You, you can't lock that information out. Yeah, it's, it's locked out. Sorry. No. Obsidian. Denied. He's known as the cutting wyvern, so what more do you really even need to know? Him to be physically cut, capable of hitting cut, Tigrex? Cut through the competition. Physically capable? Are you kidding me? Tigrex doesn't dodge. He's almost Astalos levels no, of but psychopath he's, he's incredible. Yeah, but he's incredibly fast and agile. Like, he's no, also no, not no, dumb. No, like, Monster no. sees giant tail sword coming down. You they don't think I'm gonna get hit this by argument. that. Monsters don't look at other monsters and go, that's a bit dangerous. I better stay clear. They don't okay. know. They don't care. They just fight. They're animals. Right? Yes, okay. but they're not fucking idiots completely. But that doesn't... They, they will learn once it's done damage. Like, for example, there very specifically is a fight between Glavinus and Rathian. And Rathian goes You don't goes think a Tigrex has ever been hit by something sharp before and thought, ow, that will hurt. I will avoid sharp things in the future. That's irrelevant, though, because he doesn't it's look a at giant the tail and go, sharp thing. and go, that's a sharp thing that will kill me. Sharp tail coming from 30 feet above me because he's prepared an attack. I'm not gonna get hit by that. Only once it's hit and not killed him. That's the thing. He's gotta learn I from the pain as animals that. do. I don't agree with that. I think they're smarter than average animals. Look, man, you can you can disagree with me that the Earth's round. It doesn't make you a valid argument. Five minutes later. The other thing he said is is too agile. And the thing is, he is fast, yes, undeniably, but in a straight line. And he's not agile. In nearly every fucking video of him, ecology video, when he tries to turn, he just almost falls over, desperately scrabbling at the ground. In fact, you see it in game as well when you fight him. He ends up rolling around on his back. Well, when I say agile, I don't mean he's going to be, like, jumping off of buildings and shit. I just mean that he will be able to make it to Glavinus before Glavinus can hit his tail where he was standing. Yeah, yeah, but it's not like Glavinus' only weapon is the tail. That's like, a Glavinus large portion is pretty of it. fucking. Like, if Tigrex is charging straight at Glavinus, and Glavinus fires the molten, like, lava, ory, like, goop explosion yeah, if he gets in the right in spot. his face, that's just gonna burn. However, at the minimum, blind the fucker. Glavinus has, like, nothing close range, and Tigrex is all about that physical space. Like, Glavinus will not be able to deal with a Tigrex that is either. that, that is, like, latched onto its side, and I think that's what's going to happen. Like, I think he's going to charge him, latch on, and just fucking do whatever he can to kill him. One thing you, I don't think you can disagree with is one tail hit and the fight's done. Yeah, of course, but the tail is so big and slow, and Tigrex is not going to stand still in the distance. Okay, but yeah, so what if Glavinus does the move where he puts the tail in his mouth, does grinding it, Tigrex is spinning in him, and he does the spin fucking launch forward and just essentially fucking... Anime flashes through him and yeah, slices no, that, him in half. Sure, if that hits, but it's all about the timing. If Tigress gets to Glavinus and gets onto him before he does that, he will not die to yeah, it. Yeah, but he can't get to him while he's charging that up because it's a 360 hits everywhere around him and it goes in a straight line as well. It's not literally a 360. It, there is like specific angles where you would not get hit and Tigrex is going to be I mean, aiming you were to fucking jump ground, on him. But he does spin in a circle with his sword. Yes, but he's going to be trying to jump onto his fucking back, slowly eating or roaring at him while he's on his back. Well, we, the roars, the monsters don't get affected by monster roars. They would be by Tigrex ones. Ones that do damage, obviously they would be because they don't just do damage damage because we're fucking humans. Everything has ears. If it's strong enough to do damage, it's strong enough to do damage because it's vibrating your fucking oh, insides. That depends entirely on the uh, the makeup of the of the creature's ears. Like, there's some creatures that can take colossal amounts yes, and of I, I I think, shit. I think it's entirely more reasonable to say it would probably at least do some damage than to say, no, nah, no, that's just not a factor anymore, even though we don't know that. I hate having to argue against a monster that I prefer than the monster that I'm fighting for. It's so sad. <laughs> But either way, I think we've reached a, uh, a stalemate on this. This is this is down to the votes. Yep. Three, 
two, one, dragons. <laughs> uh. Oh. You're gonna lick you. How You're did gonna you get make you. it look like a gypsorosis ass? <laughs> oh my god! Ah, oh, yours just looks like a normal face put onto something vaguely lunar shaped. Normal people do not have that face! If I put that face on a human and, and you thought, yeah, that's just a person I'd see walking down the street, I'd be very concerned. Can, can you put it on a, on a human? See? Doesn't that look great? <laughs> no. No, it doesn't. <laughs> well, this is a turnip, isn't it? I think it's quite easy, actually. <laughs> hey, you're telling me this is a slam dunk. Firstly, we gotta address the fact whether we're uh, whether we're busting out World Lunar or Old World Lunar. Obviously, that's, World Lunar, because uh, it's the more accurate version of Lunar. Three, two, one, and I'm off. <laughs> the Mist Dragon, literally fucking invisible. So, really. The fight starts and he was like, where'd he go? And then the next time he sees him is when he's biting her fucking face off. But irrelevant of all of that, Lunar is as susceptible to poison as every other monster is. Uh, well, most of them, except for the super poison monsters. And uh, Camellios puts poison everywhere. Poison mist. Literally, the entire arena is covered in both normal mist. Lunar can't see what the fuck is happening on top of the monster literally being invisible still, by the way and then also covered in poison. So essentially, you might say, yeah, all the fire and the heat and everything, but it's a fucking Elder Dragon. It's Camellios, right? He is the same level as uh, Teo and Luna and Kashala. They're a little, little quartet they got going on there. It's just a light, sunny day for him. He's just gonna sit there, be a bitch on the wall, invisible, as she dies of fucking poison. And my time's up. Go! All right, so Lunastra, one of her main things is the fact that she's fucking hot to the point where she burns things that are near her, literally. Oh, that kind of hot. Yeah, she's that kind of hot, but she's also the other kind of hot. We had you a did, nice time. You did go out with yeah, her. Yeah, so, you're yeah. not allowed to talk during this time. Yeah, I'm taking sorry, ten I just points away from you. Point out that you slept um, with a Lunastra. All right, that's twenty points away from you. All right, so <laughs> Camellios is burning, even if he's invisible. He's fucking just boiling in his own skin slowly. And sure, we'll say that doesn't do too much because he's an Elder Dragon. But Lunastra also has ninety percent of her attacks are just massive fire AOEs that would not care if he's invisible, and she would probably purposefully do that if she can't see it and knows it's there. The second and he comes out and bites her once. He's like, all right, he's invisible. I'm going to light this bitch up. And not only that, but the second Lunastra puts a patch of fire down, she's going to extend it, and then they chain. Her fire literally chains in circles as she does more fire. The invisibility will not help him after about 10 seconds. I don't know how the poison's going to work, because I don't know how the poison mist works, but I imagine Camellius looking at him is probably quite weak to fire. Well, I will, I will, I will, I will give you, because I believe in fair and, and, and balanced arguments, is that he, he, his head specifically isn't a fan of fire. Okay. But it's, it's, it's not the most grievous weakness in the world. And yeah, look, I admit out of the elder dragons that were available, <laughs> which were, uh, these ones. Damn it. I didn't want to put that on screen. <laughs> Put them there and replace each of their faces with a plant. <laughs> each of their faces with a plant? Yes, please. But yeah, I realize that Luna is probably uniquely good at dealing with Camellios because, as you say, just constant AoE everywhere. But that really yeah. only comes in the form of her supernova. So that's like, what, no, it doesn't. every five minutes or so? Like 90% like, of her fire is just indiscriminate. I'm going to go this yeah. entire direction yeah, yeah. in fire. Yeah, sure, she has AoE, but the only, like, true everywhere in the arena AoE is is the flamey Novary. Yeah, but she'd have to get hit. very unlucky to not hit him with most of her attacks. If he was standing still waiting for it, I, he can move incredibly areas. quickly invisible. Like, it's he moves massive quicker invisible than he does not invisible. Like, he's like lightning. He can jump scare the fuck out of you out of nowhere. Like this! He's gonna go invisible, Luna's gonna start blasting off fire in every which direction, and the next thing she yeah. knows, he's going to be on her <laughs> chomp. Yeah, I mean, first off, she'll probably hit him while he's invisible, even if he's fast. Like, it covers massive areas, the likelihood of him not getting hit is tiny. But also, she's building up these patches that she can use immediately after to extend the fire in much larger areas, because it does change. also, what's... What's interesting here is that Luna uses her wings and beats it to push the fire and everything further out. Camellios uses his wings and beats it to push the poison and, and fog further out. 
So I do wonder who has the stronger wind beat in this kind of tug of war of fire and mist going back and forth between them. Because it's entirely possible that Camellios just keeps pushing the fire back over and over and over Yeah, but that's again. like one of her attacks. It's also entirely possible that his mist himself acts as a dampener on fire. Because I mean, it's Ah, uh, yes, moisture. let's decide that this mist just puts out fires. Yes, that'll help me, but not necessarily be accurate at all. I mean, mist is literally moisture. It's small amounts of moisture. It's not, no it's yeah, not but even this rain. Is, this and is rain Elden doesn't Dragon powered mist. Rain doesn't <laughs> even put out fires. Yeah, but this is Elder Dragon. All right, mist. let's say the mist is now the, the, the strength of a, of a slight downpour. It still does fucking nothing. <laughs> But I at least think it would give him a nice uh, a nice cushion against just the intense heat radiating out on her. I yeah, it, it uh, probably would. Actually, that depends. Cause it's putting the moisture on his skin, but it doesn't necessarily be cold moisture. And the thing is, that water will heat up a lot faster than his skin would and would probably make him even hotter. Uh, potentially. Though at least I mean, this is the advantage here of being cold-blooded, so he's already quite chill to begin with. But this this comes down to, because Luna can't specifically target Camellios at any point, between the mist everywhere and his being literally invisible if he wants to be, I am 100% sure that he could remain unhit and unseen literally the entire fight for the length of time it took Poison to kill her. I don't think so. Because I don't think that whatever Mr. Shit that he has is going to be strong enough to not uh, get within like three feet of her without burning the fuck up. Yeah, okay, but it doesn't, it, that doesn't need to get within three feet of her. That doesn't change what I said, though. If the mist won't poison her, then he has to do it himself. If he has to get that close, he will die. Well, no, the poison mist will still get to her. It's the normal moisture mist that will burn up. Poison mist is intangible. <laughs> what? You can't just say that! It's just, little, it's, just little park, it's just little particles in the air, like the heat's not gonna affect that one way or the other. Heat does though! Heat will literally cleanse water! That's what it does! And if you're saying it's poison mist, it will cleanse the poison mist! It's poison gas. Like, All right, then you'd burn it. Okay, then gas. it would definitely burn the poison gas because it's like fire does affect poison gas. Like fire is no, like you're the, one it's of the flammable. natural. Oh my god! I, I I will accept that Luna, out of every option, is the best matchup to beat Camellios. But I I think this might be one of the true 50-50s we've had so far. Well, we'll have to let the comments decide that because I disagree. <laughs> well, obviously, it is a little job to disagree. Yeah, it is. Three, two, one. Go! <laughs> I mean, I guess. That's definitely not what it looks like. Yes, it is. What do you think it looks like? If you remove the fire, it's probably pretty accurate. Well, the fire's accurate because it's a creature from hell. Yeah, but it doesn't physically cover in fire. So we have a Apsaros Ap versus a Bullfango. <laughs> yeah, we do. Have fun. Go! Yeah, so like Apsaros are actually really territorial, but not only that, but they always they always come in threes. They're they're, they're very much they like the little pack mentality. Hey, not a big pack mentality. You can't say this is a three v one. I mean, I can if if we haven't decided the territory. I can I can say that. But, <laughs> but uh, so a Apsaros at someone coming fucking near them will start like eyeing them sidelong, like I'm about to fucking murder you, and they will just like 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 fucking like knock him a little bit but the thing with Absaros is they've got incredibly hard shells and they've essentially got mace tails so if they decide that they want to fight you they can actually fucking fight you if you let them hit if you let them hit you and a bullfango is literally just going to be running up trying to hit and trying to pierce probably bouncing off off of uh shell because of the angle of the dust unless it's smart enough to realize not to do that and then the Absaros is going to be like all right i'm gonna fucking sit on you and you're gonna die now You have three seconds. Three seconds? Absaros. Uh, now you're out. Here I go as I close my uh, Google search of Bite Force of a Chameleon. And... <laughs> <laughs> wow. Boom! So, Bullfango, an honorary herbivore. He's, uh, he's actually one of the few multi categoried monsters, so how about that for you? Little known that fact there. Sounds bullshit. But, uh, but, he charges very fast with very sharp horns. That's literally it. Admittedly, that is literally his whole shtick. But if you look at the Apsaros, the shell is like just a place on his back. Like that's it. It protects from above. Like his side and under and everything from down there. Essentially, the height the horns will hit is just normal soft skin underbelly. So the Bulfango will impact and then... And then that's going to be one in pain, bleeding, thrashing Apsaros as he withdraws the tusk. And like that's... 
that's the encounter, really. They're herbivores. They're not the sharpest tools in the shed. And I'm out of time. I think that a single Bullfango charge couldn't kill an Apsaros. I think they're too mean. You don't for think his fangs well, okay. could pierce no, no, to, be, to be fair. No, I, I think it would pierce. I think he would have to get really lucky with the aim to pierce anything vital enough that the Apsaros could not fight back immediately and stomp I, on him. I think two horns, like, 15 inches into his side literally does not I matter I wouldn't say 15 going. inches. Like, the, the well, size I could of argue over the inchage, inchage of a Bullfango well, horn. No, no, because check this out. This is going to be an accurate representation of the size difference between an Apsaros and a Bullfango. It's at least as, as long as, like... A ruler and a ruler deep. Yeah, but it's not really that long because his nose is also there, and he's not gonna like literally break his nose to impale for. Are you kidding me? He's a fucking bullfango. He would break his spine if it meant charging. Yeah, but he can't. He doesn't physically have the power to do that. No, no, but he would still absolutely full force launch himself, and this guy's now got two horrible stab wounds along his side. An Absaros will have the opportunity to fight back, and an Absaros is bigger enough than a Bulfango that I think it just would, like, fucking just ruin him if it got a single hit off, regardless of what it is. I mean, it would hurt him, yeah, but this is a Bulfango. He don't stop till he physically has to. All it takes is one leg breaking, and those legs are pretty not sturdy. <laughs> I can see a Bulfango dragging himself with a broken leg, still trying to kill people. That's the most badass thing I've ever heard. I mean, this entirely comes down to if you think the initial impact of the Bulfanko is going to do enough yeah. damage to uh, win the fight. Yeah, that's it. And, and I think I think there are many worlds in which it does, and perhaps, yes, many in which it, uh, it doesn't. Yeah, I think this is probably the hardest argument for both of us, because it, it, what, what are we even doing, honestly? <laughs> yeah, what are we doing?! <laughs> Good <laughs> win between an Apsaros and a Bullfango! The world's most important question. We went from Lunasta versus Camellios to Apsaros versus Bullfango. <laughs> this is what we do with our lives! <laughs> yeah, I'm, just, I, I, I'm just glad no one picked Kelby because we all know they're immortal. Alright, guys. Polls will be down below. Let's have your votes. Let's see how this does go. I'm excited. I think this is going to be a close one on literally all three fronts, so we'll see yeah, how this happens. Yeah, it'll probably be the closest one we've had, I think. Oh, yes. Thanks for watching. Ultimate Turf War. Kapow! Yeah! Boom! There's an explosion there. Too, don't too do many. I, I put many an explosion times. there. Oh, okay. Thanks. Nice. I like no it. problem. I like yeah. it, actually. Cool. All right. I'm going to put another one here. Oh! Oh, and one here, right? Oh, that one was really tiny. Well, you know, it's, it's not about the size of your explosion. Sorry, I understand. Well, it's vote, and we'll see you, you next week. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. This is great for more. Oh, good boy. Goodbye. Yeah. All right. Da -da Wait, no drum roll. Well, no drum roll. It's not. There's no drum roll. <laughs> put a fucking drum roll in, or I quit. I do put drum rolls in, but it's not gonna be here. Put my drum roll in right now, or I quit. No, that, you don't drum roll into the monster reveal. That's not how it works. Then I quit!